also with, with, with Matthew 7, 1, is right after Christ said that, do not judge, or you too will be judged, he called them hypocrites. He made a judgment. And is Christ not our example to follow? So right after he said don't judge, he judged them. Okay? Then he says, don't judge while you have a log in your eye. First remove the log. I think you guys are overanalyzing it, dude. No, we're just we're just exegeting I mean, it. Because huh? no, over see, overanalyzing right is simply when care. when I don't disagree with you, you're overanalyzing. Dude, you're over I mean the Bible is, is something full of stories and full of wisdom for us, but the ultimate goal is treat others like you want to be treated, accept the Lord as your savior, know that he died for our sins, and be happy and, and all that stuff. I mean you're and you take like one sentence from this, one sentence from that. And I mean, so, if I read the lyrics of a song and one said, slap a bitch, the next, and then I took a lyric from another song that said something else, I mean, dude, you're calling me stupid, you're a fucking idiot. You guys smoke that, meth and then come that, that was, talk that about a, shit, I mean, it, it, you guys are you, are you you're considering yourself about. a Christian? Dude, I am a Christian. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's sound, are you, you cool. sure sound like it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that is called hypocrisy. That is the very thing that we just spoke of, Matthew 7, 1. Do not cast judgment while you have a log in your eye. He just did that. He needs to repent of his sin. You, you told me it's okay to judge, didn't you? Yeah, but not while you have a log in your eye. But everybody has a log in their eye because nobody's perfect. No, no, no. Listen, sir, this is what he's saying. It's, it has nothing to do with perfection. If I was committing adultery and I condemned you for committing adultery, then I would be a hypocrite. That is what Christ is condemning. What he's saying is, stop committing adultery, then you can condemn someone else for committing adultery. Okay? It doesn't mean, oh, be perfect, and then you can make a judgment. That's not what it's saying. Say, don't judge someone for the thing you're doing. Well, if I'm not doing it, then I'm not guilty. I think it's counseling, then, if you're not... It's not judging, it's, it's guiding somebody through life. If you see something they're doing wrong, you can take something and help them. I don't think that's I judging. Okay, so what you're doing wrong is believing in the wrong thing. Therefore, I am helping you along. Right. And these people call themselves Christian, and they don't even follow the church people. You will know them by their fruit. Fruit is not just behavior. It's doctrine as well. Your doctrine is a demonstration of your fruit. If you have false doctrine, I will know you. In other words, I will know whether or not you are a true follower of Christ by your doctrine. So if you deny hell, if you promote sinless perfection, if you deny the deity of Christ, you're a polytheist, you're not a Christian. Okay, there are basic fundamental truths of the scriptures that have to be accepted in order to even call yourself a Christian. Christ himself says, if you don't believe on God, you're dead in your sin. Okay? There are things the Bible says you have to believe in in order to even begin to call yourself a Christian. Sir, did you... Wait, wait. I have a question. What's up, sir? Alright, why is abortion Nazism? Because it's a completely different subject. Uh, Holocaust? Alright, Holocaust kill a lot of Jews, alright? And now you're killing Americans. That's completely different. Jews are not Americans. So, so Americans Jews. aren't people. Alright, so abortion, there's three stages, right? There's a there's the okay stage, the <laughs> fucked up stage, and the fucked up stage. What you, I don't understand what you're talking about. The okay stage in the first month you have an abortion. Do you, do you, what do you mean bad? okay stage? You're talking about first trimester, second and third trimesters? No, 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 not, yeah, the first trimester. Okay. Do you know what a trimester is? Yeah, it's uh, three mesters and a uh, tri. Three mesters and a tri. <laughs> and at least this guy is fun. Go ahead. Supplement. It's Nazism because the Nazis were uh, killing Jews because they did not consider them human. Just like those who try to justify the abortion do so based upon the fact that they say they're not human. Okay. Go ahead. It's, it's, not, it's Nazism. It's, it's just that simple. I want to get these goons on tape because it's going to go on YouTube. It's this simple. If, if the human life... Hold on a second. If the unborn is not a human being, because that's what it's going to essentially boil down to. If they are not a human person, then no justification for abortion is necessary. Go ahead, have your abortion. No questions asked. We don't even need to, to discuss the topic. It's just a clump of tissue, right? Why, why would anyone hate uh, removal of a piece of tissue? It's like saying, oh, I hate 
tumor removals. No, that makes no sense. Well, I can understand why, as a society, we may choose to keep it legal. But, but do you personally think it is legitimate? And a, and a good idea. I think that as a society, we shouldn't force someone what, to carry what? something in their body if they okay. decide they shouldn't. What, what is it that is and so that's special? What that, is... That's a reason that when it comes to a full, you know, a baby that's born, I think as a society, we should let people abandon their child to the rest of society when they want to. And when the day comes when we can save the fetus with a test tube or something, we will probably not require someone to carry it in their womb. But right now, if someone values life differently, if they're okay killing the fetus and not wanting to carry it in their body, I personally wouldn't want to force them. And I hope the rest You're of society would also choose not to force them to carry that You're baby. Um, yeah, yeah this, oh yeah, I forgot this guy does the little uh, protect the animals thing. Uh, oh, hey, sir, you gonna stick around so I can... Uh, uh, <laughs> can I say something? This guy is a... a big age. <laughs> big age, um, definitely. I forgot about he, that. He, said, he says, you know, if, if, if a woman doesn't want to carry it, ah, screw it, we'll just get rid of it. Is that what the society has come to? That just because it's an inconvenience, we get rid of it? Well, you know what? Homeless people are an inconvenience. Should we get rid of them? When people get expensive, may we execute yeah, them? Yeah, all the people on welfare. You know what? It's an inconvenience to me because I pay taxes. So it's my dollars that are feeding you. Uh, so should we get rid of them because they're inconvenient? Um, old people are, are quite often inconvenient. Should we kill them? Yeah, I mean, uh, let's carry let's carry I this hardly, ridiculous argument to its logical conclusion. I hardly think that we would applaud the family for executing their toddler, also that the the budget could these be. These people, uh, these people are uh, more concerned with animals than they are human life. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't see how anybody can take that guy seriously. Um, but see, here's the thing: is the other side of the coin was I said, well, if it's not a, a human person, then no justification is necessary. However, if we can conclude, and we can easily do this scientifically speaking and philosophically, logically, that the the the, uh, the zygote, the blastocyst, all the way to the earliest stages, is a human person. In fact, like I said, all the medical uh, textbooks uh, uh, state this then no justification for abortion is ever adequate if we can determine that factor. Okay, so that's the only question. All these other things are side-related, rabbit trail, red herring distractor arguments. And usually that's a sign that a person doesn't have any argument with any substance. And that they just want to uh, divert. Okay, so what? Oh, it's, it's hurting my body. Well, guess what? Raising a kid can sure raise your blood pressure. Uh, can hurt you know hurt your back when you're lifting them. All sorts of things can go uh, amiss. Yeah, and do you, with your body. Honestly, Tom, do you think all those people that are pro-choice, like our dumbass president, um, do you honestly think that they would have been pro-choice if they were in the womb and their mamas wanted to kill them? Nope. They wouldn't want to be pro-choice then. <laughs> they're only pro-choice after they're born. Right. That's what we're out here to do, is to uh, make uh, rational arguments, hopefully. We don't get many rational arguments from the other end of the microphone. Once in a while, we do. Um, be it atheism, evolution. And in fact, evolution is quite in accords with all this sort of thinking, this Nazism. I'm asking, what I'm asking is, do you do exactly what's in the Bible? That's what I'm asking. No, that's why I need Christ. Because that's, the, that's what the point is, is that you don't follow the Bible. Nobody does. And who does? What? You're judging him right now. Yeah. I'm saying. You're making judgments. My entire point was that. So judge. That's okay. Go ahead and judge, but. You don't do everything. Oh, you said I could have a microphone. This microphone. The one I'm yapping from. There's, there's that you told everybody that they were condemned and that they're all going to hell, but you don't follow everything in the Bible 100% either. Then that would mean I would be an error. So how or the would fuck do you know that these people are going to hell? You're saying, ma'am, that if that I am wrong because I'm not how following... How could you possibly know that everybody was going to You are saying I'm wrong because I'm not following the Bible. But then you're saying when the Bible says they're going to hell, how do you know? So you're contradicting yourself. Well, first of all, I didn't even say it. It was Chris, but regardless, okay, make a point and then I'll address it. Let's start from I didn't scratch. I say anything was anybody was. Let's start from scratch. Just, just ask a question. 
Because this is going nowhere. How do you know that all of these people around us are going to hell, as you've claimed, when you yourself are not following everything in the Bible 100% literally? That, that's a disconnect. That's called a non sequitur. That's it, unrelated. A non -sequitur, My everybody. following something or not is irrelevant to the issue of it being. Uh -huh. For example, it is, uh, let's say... Um, are you kidding me? I do not follow the rules at school, but the rules are still in place and they still apply to the people there within. So just because I don't pay homage Nobody to knows it what you're or disobey... About. Nobody knows what Jesus wanted. Jesus did not want you to come here. I've already showed you that that's no. not true. Jesus, can do you, you want to talk? See? Can you let me talk or no? No, because you're Jesus not making Jesus did sense. not want you... We've already refuted you on Jesus that point. Jesus did not May want... I, do it again? I haven't said this. Let me talk. Go ahead. Jesus did not want you to come here in the middle of the street and tell everybody that they were going to hell. He that says, is, go unto all I don't the world, care. Okay. preach the gospel. He says, to tear Jesus down... Jesus said to preach the gospel, but Man, he did not... You're going to keep cutting me off like that. i got to talk. I'm trying to respond to what you just said. Of course, I'm supposed to make judgments. Thank you. Yes, this man has some biblical truth. Should Christians judge? Well, the, sadly enough, the most known and quoted Bible verse by uh, ignorant Christians or, or pagans who just want me to shut up or anyone else presenting truth usually quote this one. They even know it more than John 3.16, the one they trumpet at football games. Uh, it says, judge not, least you be judged. And then they stop there. See? Let me take my scissors, cut this little out piece out, and pay no mind to uh, context. If we did that with any other literary work, we would end up with uh, errors all over the place. Well, you just look a few verses down. Two verses down. First cast the beam out of your own eye, then you will be able to see clearly to cast the splinter out of your brother's eye. Well, if you're judging splinters, all it's saying is don't be hypocritical. Uh, in context, within 15 verses of that one that I just read, it says don't throw your what is holy to dogs and do not throw your pearls before swine. It also says beware of false prophets. You can see the highlighted yellow sections. So how is it that she can say, oh, you're not supposed to judge, or anyone says this, when right in the very context, that even in all over scripture, it endorses and in fact tells us to make judgments. This is how are you supposed to know who the pigs and the dogs and the false prophets are unless you're making some judgment calls. And, you know, one right here where Paul was filled with the Holy Spirit, even, fixed his gaze in, on this individual and said, you're a fool of all deceit, you fraud, you son of the devil, enemy of all righteousness. Will you not cease to make crooked the ways of the Lord? And, and it's all over the place. I'll just leave that one up for people to read, and I'll let you ask a question. Go ahead. My question is, uh, how do you know that God, your God is real because it, compared to all the other religions out there? Impossibility of the contrary. I don't know if you've heard that terminology before. When I look to the scripture, I see many different uh, verifications that it has supernatural origin on it. Fingerprints, if you will. Uh, things like prophecy. Uh, things like just the, uh, the way it was compiled such that it's beyond human ability to produce something with 40 different authors over 1,600 years written on different continents, cultures, etc., and that they all are in complete harmony. Uh, that in itself is a, is a feat beyond human ability. Uh, prophecy, like I just said, is another one. Uh, I mean, personal testimony of, of the transformation, the supernatural transformation that God has uh, done in my life, that's another proof. But personal, what I mean is, what's the, where's the evidence, like, the tangible, I mean, obviously there's a lot of things that are hard to explain and, and virtually impossible, like, the wonders of the world and all these things, miracles that happen, all this stuff. What is the tangible evidence that you have that God exists? Do you have conversations? Have you seen God? Everything. How, how, how is it? You, how is it? No, no, no. Okay. sir, like I just said, remember the impossibility of the contrary? Yeah. Give me the alternate, which is correct. If there is no God, there's nothing that explains existence. The, ex the existence no, I, of God is proved I, I, I by existence. I believe in God. I just don't know if it's... A, why? why I, how do you know which, which God it is? There, uh, the world offers so many different religions. Let me turn it up just a little bit. Go ahead. Continue. The world offers so many different religions and beliefs, and, and, and I believe that there's something. I'm not saying that I'm an atheist. I just don't know. How do you know it's Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, and not Allah, not... Not other religions. I've, I've tested the claims. I've looked at all these religions. See my Quran here? But even a reading, I mean tangible. You could read, I'm saying... Why is it you default only to tangible things? Can you, can you tangibly demonstrate that uh, the scientific method which you're appealing to is the only way to know things? No, I'm open. I'm just saying, I don't know. I, I, I don't okay. claim to have an answer. That's why if, if, oh, I when see. I see somebody's claiming to have an answer, I want to know what led them to that path. 
Because most people okay. I find in my life... Like, You're actually asking a question. You're not like the, the multitudes who are uh, structuring a, a statement in the form of yeah, a question. I, I, if anyone ever comes to you and says, show me scientific evidence, some tangible proof, those are basically the same thing. Mm -hmm. They want something they could touch, grab, see with their eyes. That very thing is a philosophical assumption of the nature of truth. Well, science is not the only way we can come across the truth. Okay. It's one way, no doubt. But if you're going to limit it only to that, well, then you don't even know if you love your wife. Because what scientist is going to hook you up to the love meter to, to demonstrate that? That's a truth claim right there. That that's the only way we can know things. But yet that's not scientifically demonstrable. Yeah, that's true. I, to me, I'm just, I'm, I'm out on a quest looking for answers. That's why I don't know. I don't the more I study the people who try to criticize the Bible, the more I'm laid uh, firm in those convictions. So I'm never decreasing in faith by ch the challenges. It's always increasing. But that's your starting point. You need a conversion. You need your heart regenerated. You need to be renewed. I don't have the time now. I just I I'm, a, I'm on a mission to find my own answers. But I just always want to. Well, I that is the only cool. answer, and without it, you will perish in hell. So well, you don't want that, man. I don't want that. Yeah. That's why I'm out here. What's sin for me isn't sin for you. But again, if morals are not relative, but according to your philosophy, at least you're being consistent that morals are relative. So I could say. How's about that wallet of yours? No? Get it if you can, right? So if I, if I was strong enough, I don't think I am, but to take you, but and, and whooped your butt and took your wallet, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have any beef with that, would you? Philosophically Well, speaking. if you needed money because you were hungry, I'd give you some money. What if I just wanted to beat the crap out of you for the fun of it and take your wallet? Yeah. Would uh, that be okay? I don't know how much you want to pay me. Huh? How much you want to give me? <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm done. Thanks for your time. Thanks. What's your name, by the way? Thank you. Uh, Tom, can I add something? Yes, you may. Okay. You had good, sincere questions. We appreciate that. Yeah, I like uh, cool guys like that. The, the, the problem is this. He kept asking for proof. If you notice, he said, saying, what, where's the proof? Where's, you know, where's, where's the beef? Right? Those old Wendy's commercials. Yeah, where's the beef? The problem is, without God, there's no such thing as proof. Proof does not exist without God. If you, if you think about it from the atheistic world and life view, we are nothing but matter in motion. We are just a complex set of chemical reactions. Now, let me give an illustration. If we were to take two bottles of soda and we shook them up. What kind of soda, sir? Whatever you prefer. We need to be specific here. I'll say Dr. Pepper and Cherry Coke. Okay. Okay? I'm with Dr. P all the way. Me too. Right. If, you, if you shake them up and you pop them open and they start bubbling over, would we ask which one of them is giving proof for anything? No. Would we ask which one of them is winning the debate? No. Because they're just... Well, Dr. Pepper has a PhD, so I would go with him. Maybe. But they don't... They're, they're not giving truth. They're not giving proofs. They're not winning debates. Okay? So, we are nothing but cans of soda bubbling in our heads. So, according to the atheist evolutionary world in my view, there's no such thing as proof. So once you once you demand proof, you've already conceded the debate. Yes, I appreciate that. Um, likewise, when we're talking about morals, um, let's say we had a uh, an accident out on the freeway. Was it tragic? Can we even use a word like tragic? All these descriptive terms that we use to to indicate goodness or badness? No, we cannot because uh, first of all, I need a, a transcendent source. Transcendent means above and beyond, kind of umbrellas everything. We need some sort of transcendent source by which goodness is to know that which departs from it, or badness. I don't know what crooked is unless I know what straight is. So where am I going to? Well, with atheism, all we have is relativism, and for one man, crooked is straight, and vice versa. One man's treasure is another man's garbage. It's just like that. We have no transcendent source. So when this accident, this collision happens on the freeway, how do we determine if it was tragic or not? I mean, it's just one conglomeration of atoms that banged into another conglomeration of atoms, and the same, you know, you have neuron circuits and firings of electrical chemical responses in one biological bag versus the firing of the circuits inside the uh, computer of the car and the, the mechanical combustion, and those chemicals going haywire. Oh, man, which is, which is tragic, that the car died or the, the person? We don't know. We're weighing one set of atoms versus another. That's all we are. Atoms banging around, doing their thing, 
you're one bag of biological tissue, and the black man is another one, right? So when when the people who were uh, doing slavery in this country uh, wanted to give black bags of biological stew less rights than the white ones, who cares? No complaints. And since I was on that, I had the slide up earlier, um, the bunch of jiggets around here uh, trying to say that people should be pro-choice uh, as if uh, they weren't uh, doing some special pleading there with their, their positive connotation that they give their title. Hmm, pro is good. Choices are good, too. It's a trick, though. Uh, they're actually a socialist, uh, communist organization, and they made it clear with the flyers they were handing out last time they were out here. I'm glad I haven't seen them yet, because they're loud and dis destructive and, and uh, disturbing, just like the uh, atheists who cut my cord over there. Real good uh, moral uh, compass these fellows have. But uh, with regards to the uh, Mormons, um, here's some things I want to cover real quick. In case you didn't know, if you're a Mormon, please leave it, because number one, and first and foremost, and it's the banjo string at which I'll continue to pluck all night long. Because if you can't get past this, you can't get into the other things like the doctrinal issues. If you encounter a Jehovah's Witness as a Christian out here, if they come to your door at a JW or a Mormon, do not get into these little rabbit trail distractor uh, arguments. These little rabbit trails, uh, red herrings as they call them in logic, where they, they take a, a, a red smelly fish, throw it in a different direction, and then go a, a different way in hopes that the hound dogs will go down that trail and not towards them. Stick, don't, <laughs> don't, don't let that happen. You know, be a, be a smarter hound dog and don't be taking off the trail because they will try to take you down many different doctrines of Trinity, etc., etc. And you don't need to do that because, first of all, it's going to not convince them because they have a higher authority which trumps anything you're saying. In fact, you're part of the demon Christian uh, Christendom uh, and it trumps also your scripture because yours is a tainted version. Theirs is the corrected version. So it's much more effective to show that that which they place their trust in, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, or Joseph Smith, that those two, uh, one being an organization, the other being an individual, were false prophets. And there's many ways, I don't have the slides here yet, if you show them clearly in their writings that they made prophecies that didn't come to pass, then they are false prophets, and the Bible says they didn't make one. You know what the penalty was? That's why you didn't have a lot of false prophets going around, because the penalty was death. They stoned you. And like I said before, this is not the kind of stoning where you lit up a, a blunt and said, Puff, puff, give! <laughs> you know, so, here, hey, Tom, just don't call me Skip. Don't call you what? Skip. Skip. All right, so, look, here's what, uh, just for fun, because a lot of people don't know about this, I took the time to gather a bunch of different verses uh, concerning what the uh, Mormons think of black people. Uh, and, and, you know, it's sad to say, uh, I'm sad to say that there are a lot of black people in this organization. I don't, I see a couple brothers out here. Uh, pass the word on. Let people know that uh, they teach this so that uh, the one, the people who are in that church can get out. It says, that, and he had the cursing come upon them, yea, even a sore cursing because of their iniquity. For behold, they had hardened their hearts against him, and become like unto a flint, where they were white, exceedingly fair, and delightsome. Oh, the whiteies are nice and delightsome. Uh, and uh, the, the uh, Lord uh, caused their skin and the blackness to come upon them. I mean, you can read them for yourself. I don't want to go through all of them. It'll take too long. Um, but a, that a dark and filthy and loathsome people were those. Um, first Nephi 1315 and I beheld that they were white and exceedingly fair and beautiful second Nephi uh, third Nephi and the curse was taken from them they said that the curse of Cain the mark of Cain was the black skin that was given and that Negroes are not equal with other races where the receipt of certain spiritual blessings are concerned particularly for the priesthood so the black people are denied the priesthood and uh, the temple blessings that flow from that